2013 was the worst year of my life. I went through a personal crisis that was so painful that I would find myself sitting in a secluded park near my house all alone at 3 a.m. in the morning. Funny story from back then. I used to have long black hair, much like the girl from The Ring. And one day I was sitting there and my hair was to my sides and I see three guys walking towards me. Now, although I didn't care about much about my life back then, but I was still a little bit scared because, well, it was 3 a.m. and I was all alone. But much to my surprise, as soon as they saw me, they jumped back and they screamed and they ran away like anything. <laughs> because they probably thought I looked like her. 2013 was also the most necessary year of my life. Because through all that pain, something marvelous happened. I went through a phase of deep self-reflection and I discovered that I didn't really like the person I was. I discovered that I had an epicenter, something that I had come to care about more than anything else in the world. This thing was driving my life, my behavior, my emotional and mental sta state, my relationships. Everything in my life was stemming from this center of gravity. It was controlling my heart and most of the time, my mind as well. But you know what the crazy thing was? I had not chosen it to be my epicenter. I had not chosen it to be so important for me. It had become the most important thing for me through external factors, social pressures. In fact, I'm so ashamed of it that I don't even want to say what it was. I had read Stephen R. Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People when I was 12 years old. I remember my father had bought it for us. It's one of my favorite books of all time. But it was only in 2013 that I actually started to understand some of the concepts in that book. So Stephen R. Covey says that between every stimulus and response, the human being has a choice to either accept or reject that response, a choice which animals and plants don't have. I realized that I had not exercised that ability as a human, that I'd just gone with the default response. So then I do, started doing a lot of research into this topic. I read a lot of books, I listened to many lectures, I talked to many bright people. And my discovery was that most of us have an epicenter, a driving force, if you will. But most of us, a lot of us, have not consciously chosen it. Our subconscious has chosen it for us based on our conditioning, our upbringing, social influences. All of these are stimuli. And the default response of our subconscious is the epicenter that we end up having. Like they say, Knowing the problem is half the solution. So the very first step on your journey to self-discovery is to find what that epicenter is for you. It could be work, it could be family, it could be money, power, fame, or even your good looks. But these are the more common ones. It could even be something more subtle, like a constant need to be at the center of attention all the time or always wanting the approval of a parent or somebody else, or, or a desire to always be entertained. So the problem with all of these epicenters is that they're all finite. They're all restricted by time and space. They're all limited. So a person's potential becomes limited by the limitations of that particular epicenter. So for example, if work was your, you know, your core, then your family life, your um, social life, your health might even suffer. 
And if your family was at your epicenter, then what happens when a child lets you down or, um, or a family member dies? Such an event would completely crush you because your family was at the center of your existence. And so it would render you useless such that you have nothing left to look forward to in life. So now the question is, what should the epicenter be? In my humble opinion, it should be a universal, constant, unchanging truth for you based on your values and your belief systems and your principles. So for people following a certain religion, it could be the God of their religion. Stephen R. Covey, although he doesn't talk about epicenter per se, he says that it should be, that all your decision making should be centered around principles. All of these are okay. For me, it is the God of my religion, the creator. My belief system says that he is infinite, that he always was, that he always will be, that he is perfect. So I can So I cannot be limited by the limitations of anything that is created. And I literally can have the potential to do anything that I set my mind to do. Changing one's epicenter is not an easy task and is, it is definitely not for the faint of heart. Because when something is so entrenched inside you and it is at the center of your existence, then putting something else in its place can be a very, very difficult thing to do. The, the quest of changing that epicenter, what triggers it? It's the pain that triggers that change. Because when something's so finite, when something that's limited, when something that doesn't allow you to be balanced in life, instead it keeps tilting you disproportionately to one side, when something that's constantly changing is at the center, it is bound to cause pain. A lot of emotional pain. Just like physical pain is a symptom of an infection or a disease, Emotional pain can be the symptom that your epicenter is misplaced. It took me, it requires a lot of very deliberate and conscious effort to reprogram yourself. And it can be a very long and painful process. It requires a lot of concerted effort from yourself and the help of the ones who love you. But at the end of this process, you will be a happier, wiser person whose decisions in life stem from your belief and your value system. It will change your life. It, you will be able to balance all the different facets in your life. You won't excel in one area and completely fail in another. You will be able to take charge of yourself and design your life based on your priorities. Imagine if your life was a building. You would be able to put each brick in its correct place such that the finished structure is strong, solid, and beautiful. It took me a lot of, a uh, couple of painful years to reprogram myself into the person that I wanted to be as opposed to the person I was. By the year 2017, I was living my best life. I was doing really well as a mother, focused on the upbringing of my children and their, um, their health. I had an amazing relationship with my husband. Um, although I live far away, I kept constantly in touch with my parents and my siblings. I was earning top dollar and doing really well in my career. I was fit and healthy and I had an amazing circle of friends. I was excelling in every area of my life. But the pain crept up again, and this time it caught me completely by surprise. Poverty, food insecurity, abuse of children, these things started to affect me in a very deep way and personal way. Somehow it felt really wrong that I was doing so well while so many others were suffering. Most of us are really focused on our immediate family and ourselves. But the resources that we have been given, the skills that we have been given, the potential that we have been given, 
is sometimes far greater for us to just be focused on that small circle of self and family. Life of this universe is billions of years, and our life as compared to that is negligible. So if we extrapolate the life of this universe to be one year, our life would be less than nanoseconds. We would be like dots that disappear even before we've had a chance to fully appear. But let me ask you this. Do you want your dot to linger, to fade slowly after you're gone? Is it in your bucket list to do something that leaves this world in a slightly better place because you existed, because you came into this world? Do you want to leave your mark? There's a Japanese concept, first coined by Miko Kamiya in 1966, called Ikigai. Ikigai is this concept which talks about giving a person a sense of purpose in life. So it talks about finding that one thing that is the, at the intersection of these four components. Number one, something you love. Number two, something you're good at. Number three, something that is good for the world. Number four, something that you can be paid for. Something that you love is your passion. Something that you're good at is your vocation. Something that's good for the world is your mission. And something that can, you can be paid for is your profession. When you find that thing that intersects, that is the intersection of these four components, make it your calling. Make it your quest in life. Go after it. And that is what will help you create your legacy. That is what will help you leave your mark. As for me, discovering my ikigai was the answer to the pain that had hit me the second time. I left my high paying job and I started a social enterprise. I created a technology platform that digitizes charity and makes charity transparent, visible, simple to do, personal, and rewarding. It, so it aims to be a global platform that will be the marketplace and social media of global philanthropic impact. So now what are the key takeaways from my talk today? Number one, when you feel emotional pain, don't numb it with alcohol, entertainment, or some other form of escapism. Embark on a journey to discover yourself and to discover your ikigai, uh, to discover your epicenter first. And it's sometimes so well hidden that it's very difficult to find it. But once you're sure that you have found it, then ask yourself, is it the ikigai you want, is it the, I keep confusing ikigai with epicenter, so is it the epicenter that you want it to be, or is it something that you were just programmed into? And then make it what you want it to be. That's the hard part. Seek help, self-talk, meditate, spend time with yourself, and once you have gone through that difficult process, then change your life according to your new epicenter. Take charge of your life, set your priorities, set balance in your life, and then once the family and self is fixed, then go find your legacy. For me, one came after the other. For you, these two things can happen in parallel as well. I didn't know any better at the time. But once, so discover your ikigai, and once you have found it, then go on a quest of impact. Go on a quest to leave your mark. Go on a quest to make your dot linger long after you have left this world. And that is all. Thank you.